Malawi, a land comprising of ethnically diverse people, is situated in Southeast Africa. Though economically it is among the world's least developed countries, it has a rich tradition of basket making and mask carving. Nicknamed the Warm Heart of Africa, it is here that a young lay missionary hailing from India sows the seeds of God's love and joy. Stephanie D'Souza, the second of four children of the D'Souza family, has spent most of her life in Saligaon, a small village in Goa, India. An avid reader, explorer and adventurer, Stephanie always loved serving in any capacity possible. This led her to complete her master's in social work and eventually take a path that would lead others and herself on an amazing journey with Christ. Being part of Couples for Christ India, from the age of 21, she developed many fond memories with her fellow brothers and sisters, learning and experiencing God's love and sharing the same with others. At the School of Discipleship in February 2013, is when we were asked by Brother Fritz if we had a desire or a burden for souls. And when I reflected, I had no such thing. I worked with so many Muslims and Hindus and I just looked at them as human beings at a humanitarian level, uplifting them on a social, economic and political basis. And I was very excited about that. That's what we learned in social work. The work of souls is for SFC, <laughs> by FC when called upon and in church, to some extent, go for Sunday mass, choir, okay, bus, that's it. I started praying for that burden for souls. And so that's February. When May came, I had this burning, like a little burning sensation in my heart. And that's not possible, but that is where it was. <laughs> no, like, I was like, okay. And I had this unsatiable desire for to bring souls to Christ. The community, the elders in the community, felt that yes, it was a genuine call. They did ask me to go for a, a discernment and I did a five-day silent retreat. I realized there that it wasn't God going to show me that, yes, Stephanie, you have to go to Africa. See, I was waiting for that, like waiting for a voice. No, it didn't happen. The father that told me it doesn't work like that, God doesn't work like that. He will show me, he will, he will make me free to make that choice. And over those five days, God did show me the different areas that were holding me back, mostly in terms of unforgiveness <laughs> towards my family, towards the situation of my family. And after resolving those issues, forgiving the various people in my life who had hurt me through the circumstances, I realized there was nothing holding me back. One of the things was that I was required to be at my house so that my family will experience salvation and be joined together. <laughs> okay. The Lord told me at that retreat that his son had already <laughs> won salvation for everyone and I was not required really. <laughs> In as blunt as that. And I said, okay Lord. I can't really say it, really. Yeah. And I had nothing holding me back after that. I was free to make a choice. So, Af Malawi is what was presented as an opportunity. And since I have no issues at all with traveling wherever, I said yes. Yes, initially when she had told me that she's going to go for train to the Philippines, I thought maybe after finishing there, she would be doing something in Goa, which she did for a period of time. And then suddenly she got selected to go to Malawi, which she broke to her and my wife. And the uh, first concern was whether she would be safe there, hearing what is going in North Africa. It worried us a bit. But uh, she being the person, she said, my guardian angel is always with me. You can't argue against that. See, when she was born, she was a bundle of excitement and she could never contain herself, sit in one place. She was always bubbling with energy, you know. And I said, this child is something different. Maybe the best flower in my garden. 
So that is the time uh, there was something of our lady, I can't remember, it was in Salingham Church. So that is the time I said, Lord, you bless me four children. And I said, I'd like to dedicate this daughter of mine. I had three daughters. Let me dedicate one child to you. And she being who she is, she'd be wonderful in your service. And I left it at that, you know. But as time went on and through her schooling days or with her friends or even with small children, she had a knack of winning over just about anybody. You know. She was a wonderful friend. She was an exceptional daughter. And uh, she was very exceptional in her studies as well. And as years went by, one fine day from Bombay she came back. She told me that she was interested in doing something for women and children. So I said, what would that be entail? <coughs> she said, Dada, I have to do something from the way of our faith. And also educating these people. But I will be deputed in Africa. I said, Africa, where the hell is Africa? So I said, uh, Malawi. I said, it's really south of Kenya and Uganda, Tanzania, where I was born in uh, Kenya. So I said, anyway, one of my children back in Africa, land of where I was born. When she told me she was going to Africa, yeah, I was thrilled. A little scared, because so far away, maybe all those diseases and somebody might kill them and their coitry and whatever, but. I was very happy because I always wanted one of my children to serve the Lord. And this was good because I know as a social worker, she was doing what I also wanted to do in my life. So it was like, say, my dream come true, but I never pushed it onto her. So when she said she was going to do missionary work, I said, thank you, God, for that. When I reached Malawi, I am a new missionary going to do God's work in another land, Africa. Okay. Yeah. People look at Africa, let me correct rephrase. Indians look at Africa how the Americans look at India. Yes. Okay. Really. I prepared myself to be living in a hut with no water, no transport, in a jungle, no food. Of oh, some amount of food, but not all that much. We reached Malawi. It is quite developed. Okay. That having been said. Saving souls. 95% of the population is Christian. Okay, you do, fine Lord. That's all right, we can work with this. <laughs> Christians who are lukewarm. Okay, my gosh, that's harder than people who don't believe. <laughs> yes, community is present. Expectations are a lot. Comparisons even more. Experience from India. Amazing community, so vibrant. Different from the Philippines, but still amazing. Community there, growing. The difficult part was, <clears throat> let me say, the whole first year of my being in Malawi really tested my desire to be a missionary. I even questioned, I'm like, really, Lord, am I called to do this? Yes, I am going to do this. If I'm not, I'll be still doing my will. Who wants to do their will? I had sometimes, but not all the time. Yeah. There were the days where I would go for like programs or meetings and be like, yeah, it worked fantastically, my way. <laughs> and other days where I would come home crying, frustrated, like, this is not working. I don't think I belong here. It's not required. I think I should just go crying like sobbing. Tito Tony and Tita Maria, very understanding people. Of course, they've seen so many other missionaries go through them, go under their hands, whatever. And they're like, oh, this is just another baby. <laughs> yeah, so they still loved me, supported me, and helped me grow. And one thing that Tito Tony said to me is, Stephanie, actually, no, it wasn't Tito Tony, it was Levin who said, the more. God calls you to do his work, the more work he is doing on you than the other people. And I was like, so true, so true. More reflection happening. And I realized that I had I had given up some amount of pride in God. What do you know? There's still some more. And not just some, lots more pride. I had to give up some more. 
I don't know how much there is to give up, but passing whatever I can give up, I give. And I realized that I just needed to walk with these brothers and sisters of mine, no matter where they were in their journey with Christ. And I was blessed to have a Holy Ghost Father who was my director for the first for the first year. And he played such an important role, I tell you, now that I look back, if he wasn't there, I probably wouldn't have survived. Because he is the one who helped me put into perspective what God wants from me and not what I want and I think God wants for the people of Malawi who I am serving. So he helped me understand that it is not where I want people to be and the pace at which I want them to go, but to be led by the Spirit in seeing where they are at currently and understanding the pace at which they are they want to go themselves and respecting that decision of theirs to go at that pace. Even though you may see a whole different picture, like a wide, bright horizon, like, e, you can do so much more, why are you taking so long? Beat my hair lines on the wall. But no, I had to take many deep breaths and much prayer for me to just to accept people in the way they were and to accept that the Spirit will lead me and lead them and take us both according to the pace at which both our hearts are ready. Um, <clears throat> another area which I found very difficult was that I had no friends. Yes. Yes, I had my work. I had a lot of youth. 90 youth. That's, that's like really a lot of people. But we did share the same culture. They didn't know who I was. They see the, me as this whole authoritative figure come from missionary. Oh my goodness, missionaries are like some. Okay, after the priest is catechist, after catechist is missionary. Okay, maybe on the same level as catechist. Can you imagine? After the priest, okay. So, they might have been like, I don't know, afraid to be my friend or not sure if they should be my friend or what a friend is to them, I'm not really sure. But I was alone and lonely and I was like, on this WhatsApp group with Poivri chapter, they love me so much, they still kept me in the group. I love them for doing that. <laughs> but at times I was like, I don't want to be in this group. We are going here, oh, have you prepared for this picnic? Oh my gosh, sending photos, I'm like, I'm all alone, I'm missing that, <laughs> I'm missing them. Family groups, <gasps> so and so's wedding, oh my gosh, my best friends are mad, oh Stephanie, we missed you all night. Photographs, some more photographs. I was like, I can't do this, <laughs> I am missing too much. And my spiritual director again asked me, Stephanie, you are working here but you are still living in India. I was like, that's going to hold you back from your ministry. It will not allow you to fully give yourself in knowing these people and in becoming part of their lives. And I realized it had some truth. I was holding back to the comfort of media and still being in touch with friends. So much so that I was more chatting with them than with like, wanting to know these youngsters who would be my potential and friends for the future. We worked out other things. Blossom Rodericks gave me ideas. Yeah. It's like baking parties or whatever, these night sleepovers. I've not really done these things in the past. Yeah, these nail things and I don't know, feet and makeup. I asked for a set of makeup to be sent. They did send it very kind of them, along with a manicure and pedicure set. <laughs> Just so that I could have sleepovers and do these things to, to bond with my girls. Change for me. Accepted. Very nicely. I can get manicures and pedicures now. I do it for the elderly in Malawi, but I still do it for someone. Yeah. But that was really difficult. Do I get lonely still? Yes, I do. But there are a lot of difficulties that were there. But the main point is that every time I reached that low is when I went back to the moment when I felt Christ calling me, when I experienced his call and I gave him my yes. And the moments in which he led me through to reach Malawi, I go back to that and I was like, Christ, I mean Jesus. I say, Jesus, for you I will do this even again. And it doesn't matter all this that I do not have. 
because if I can bring for you even one soul, it is enough for me. And that is what keeps me going every time I reach alone or I'm unhappy or that I have difficulties at home, at home as in our community. So when you look at people's faith or the way on which they base their life or how they live, it, it sort of wants you to do something but see, you can't really, you're limited. And of course when you are limited, the only person who can do something is, is God. Of course through people, but it is still God who works through people. And a Chichawa mass, Chichawa is the language in Malawi, is two and a half hours to three hours long. A normal mass, it's not one hour, not even 45 minutes. No, no. Everything is sung, there is dance. It is, for me it is beautiful. It's like you dance right from the entrance, you dance at procession. You, I mean, often you dance when bringing the gospel, I mean the word of God for the gospel. You eat. There's a lot of dancing. A lot of singing and it's beautiful. If heaven would sound anything like that, it would sound like how they sing in Malawi. Beautiful way. Anyway, how I would desire that, you know, kids would have catechism or that they would do more than just be watching TV or they play. Oh, those kids are blessed. They get a chance to play instead of all these video games and jazz that India is doing now. But but still, for them to have a deeper knowledge of Christ before they reach 14, or at least some knowledge of Him before they reach 14, for youth to find their identity in Christ, as opposed to like, these preachers and prophets and these bishops of other churches, and uh, no. I mean, it's what they believe, or even for the singles to know or rather to to yearn to live holy lives or to have a purpose for their life how to how to work in their jobs how to work for their country how to look for a spouse and not just i mean not just get married because you like someone or because you have slept with someone yes the world has has infiltrated so much into africa as it has with almost every continent but it's just that I feel we would I would wish not wish because the wishing is useless anyway, I would want God <laughs> to to raise up for us in Malawi or to raise up for his church in Malawi whether it is through our movement or through other movements or even through his priests and religious men and women who know what it is to love God, to fully live for Him, to serve Him and not ourselves and not the world, to want to sacrifice what they want for their spouse or to keep the family together or to work on their marriages, like that effort to that this would work and not that they would be doing it on their own, but that they would have the backing of the church or of movements like ours. There, is, there are other family movements in Malawi that they would have this backing to fight for their families, to fight for their children, to have parents, both parents of the original marriage, for kids to grow up with the security of their parents, of not having to be shifted from uncle's houses to auntie's houses depending on finances. Not that that's a bad thing, but like given the circumstances, I would say Malawi is, the Malawians are fantastic because no matter what happens, whether your families break, the children are always looked after by other relatives in the family. Their education will be looked after. Or let's say if your uncle and auntie who's looking after you cannot afford to pay for your education now, they will do so in time to come. And the kids know that it will happen sooner or later. Like even if they are 35, they would still study to that extent. And it's amazing to see that. But 
it would be even more amazing if if we fought for what God desired of us. Yeah. Stephanie serving in Africa is like awesome as hell. She's doing missionary work. She's like, where's your sister? Like she's a missionary. Like, damn, it's so cool. I'm like yeah, and then it's uh, it's fun to tell this type of type of things to other people, you know. But sometimes it makes you sad inside and happy. Uh, both because uh, when she's here, it's so much fun. The place is alive. I have company. And she's uh, she likes to travel. And now that she's gone, I start to miss her for some days. And then it gets back to normal. And when I come home and it's like so quiet and nothing to do, then I think about Steph. Yeah, so now that she's in Africa, it's, it's cool. Though like uh, near home and stuff and it's lonely and all, I think about Steph because she has all those funny antics she does. The small stomping of feet and the little sounds and all that she makes. Awesome, you miss that stuff like on a day-to-day -day basis. So, now that she's gone, it's very lonely. Mm. That's missing her. Um, I never really imagined Steph would travel or go to a different country altogether. I knew she always wanted to be a social worker because she always wanted to work with the underprivileged kids. Um, and she was doing her stuff here. But it never really struck me, I never really thought I'd lose Steph like because we were really close, just one year age difference. And uh, when she said she wanted to go to Africa, I mean, I was sad because we've spent that time together as sisters. And I mean, I'm close to my other siblings as well, but we were close. And uh, when she said she's going to Africa, I was like, no, you cannot go. And um, so she's there now. And I know she's happy because as it says in the Bible, You've got to leave your family behind and follow Christ, right? And I think she's done exactly that. And I'm really proud of her. Um, she's followed God's will perfectly well. And I know the kids love her there. And some of the small kids even want to get married to her. And yeah, I wish they want to get married to her. I just get scared sometimes because she's in a totally different country and that to Africa. So it's really scary to know that, like, Sometimes I just think, or when I hear the news most of the times and things happening, like especially with these people in Africa, I get scared that something could happen to Steph, like while she's on mission. Anything could happen. So those are the only thoughts that come into my mind at that time. The place where I'm at now is, that's at a crossroad. And every full-time worker in the movement, in, in single, serving in the singles community, is called to to figure out where they are called to, how do you say, put down their roots in a way, <laughs> like whether in the vocation of marriage or religious life or blessed singleness. And through the 20 months that I have been serving in Malawi and serving the people, I have felt this great desire like in the whole first year, I was basically just discerning where, whether it is marriage or religious life or just blessed singleness. And somehow I felt God calling me through scripture mostly to be His completely. And I do feel that great desire in my heart to give myself to Him completely. It's very exciting actually. <laughs> I guess this, was, this would be how a girlfriend and boyfriend would feel, kind of, except that I can't really, you know, physically touch Jesus, but the, according to my spiritual director, the unseen is eternal, and the seen is temporal, not that it's against boyfriends and girlfriends, no, not at all, but I'm just saying, I'm excited about it, and, and when you read about the saints who talk about, so ecstatically about this, their intimacy with Christ, I'm like, yes, I want that. Uh -huh. And I know that 
as I keep yearning and giving myself more and more to Christ, that yeah, we all call to be saints, but I would really like to be a saint. Saint and martyr would be very nice. Okay, martyr also would be okay. But, <laughs> but saint and martyr would be awesome. Either which way is, I want to have that deep relationship with Christ, even if neither of those two happen. <laughs> to have that great intimacy with Christ. And I'm learning as of now to discipline myself in putting areas of my life, how do you say, in perspective, in terms of giving myself and deepening my relationship with Christ. Of course I miss her because besides being around and strong and very strong-willed, if I said, Stephanie, I need to clean the house, it would be clean within an hour. Immediately, she would clean it so fast, she had the energy. So I'm so glad that energy she's taken to another country and she's going to use it for the Lord. To know that Stephanie has taken her vocation forward to be a religious, is something so beautiful. Not only me, but I think everybody in the family, excluding for one aunt, her godmother, and the village, are thrilled no end. They cannot believe that a youngster, because Stephanie was a very naughty child growing up, so nobody can believe Stephanie has chosen this line. Of course, inside my heart, I know she will do very well for the Lord. The Lord has blessed her with all the talent she needs in this vocation. It hurts a little bit, and but I'm very happy. These are happy tears. So I was quite happy actually because I would say she's the youngest missionary that had gone there. And next time I accepted that, okay, she will do something. And then I started getting all the pictures from there with her and those children and the different types of people. And I said, well, they all looked happy with her around you know. I know you see, like, oh, Stephanie, my, she's gone to Malawi. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, Levin, he's gone to North mm -hmm. India, gone to all other parts of India and done like so much. Joshua and, and the other filter worker, Kevin. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Like each one of you. The God, I mean, God can use anyone. Age is no bar. Moses was like in form right to the point where he died, dropped dead. Yes? So God can use anyone. However, the way, I, the way I see it is that young people have so much more to offer God. Their energy, their enthusiasm, just the, their creativity is amazing. And it is the prime years of our life. Can you imagine, Basi, your old scooter? Okay, you have a brand new scooter. You use it and use it for like some 50 years. No offense to people who are 50 years old and above. But 50 years and then you say, okay, now I will use it for good works what if anyone has reached that point of 50 and now has decided it's a good thing it's never too late until you are dead to serve god but god sees your heart he sees the how generous you are with the life that he has given you he would want every single person on earth to serve him and i say if everyone was serving him there wouldn't be anyone to bring anyone else to him but <laughs> But just that you have out of your own free will and choice decided that you want to give your life for whatever number of years, okay, months will do, years to him, just to serve him in whatever way he is calling you to, whether it is through the community in whichever ministry. Just that the amount of joy that it's not like. God would be devoid of joy if we didn't decide to. But just the... He'd be like, this is who I made and this person is choosing me and wants to serve me and wants to bring my children back to me just for my children. It is amazing. I know if God feels, He would feel amazing that he crea His creation wants to serve Him. And 
when you are young and you give that to Christ, it is the best years of your life. It is like your first fruits. I mean, the prime of your life. And God will bless you for it. In fact, He will bless you more than a hundredfold of things that you can't even imagine. Of course, because our minds are made for this world. We can't imagine anything at all. But when you are serving Him, He's so amazing that He will actually give you glimpses into the eternal and the mysteries of His awesomeness. And He will give you whatever you require to serve Him in whatever ministry. This I am 100% certain of. He would not send someone into battle without equipping them efficiently. He would not do, he is not cruel, not at all. In fact, he would overarm you and give you backups of all kinds <laughs> just so that you win his battle, which is obvious. <laughs> so you know you are going into a battle where you are bound to win and there's really nothing that you're going to lose. So if any fear should come up, it's not from God. Not at all, because you are fighting a winning battle. It's just that you may not really see the fruit at the moment, but fruit is always certain to come because it is Christ and He is the vine and if we are rooted in Him, it will bear fruit 150%. <laughs>